My purpose in recording this video is to show what happens when you have a clay pan underneath your sandy natured surface soil. We've had about oh three inches of rain over the last couple of days. This is part of my garden here with some okra. You can see some water standing down the rows and this was uh, tilled up about oh a week and a half ago and this soil is like mush. Uh, there's a lot of water standing on top of that clay layer and saturating this sandy material that's on the surface. The problem with that is that of course our pores, soil pores, are full of water and the soil is completely saturated. Now, if this would only be for a few hours that wouldn't be a major issue but unfortunately if it keeps raining it may continue for several days. In which case these plants have no oxygen in the soil for respiration of the root system. Here are some mustard plants that are flowering. I left them for my bees to work on and had intentions of mowing them down and chopping them up here pretty soon as I did this area just to sort of create a little more organic matter in the soil. But you can see also because of the soil saturation these tall plants have now begun to fall over because they have no structure in the soil with which to uh, keep them uh, upright. So that's an issue that I'm running into. I'm just going to hope that uh, we'll get a few days of sunshine and since these plants are in the young stage, uh, they're not very large and their root systems are not well developed yet. Uh, I'm hopeful that the soil will drain eventually and that these plants will still be okay. If this situation occurs later in the gardening season, once these get up about knee high and we get four or five days of saturated soils, when the sun comes out, a lot of these plants will begin to wilt and ultimately most of them would die. So we'll see what happens. I'm hopeful they'll uh, remain healthy and we'll get through the season without another situation like this. But this is one of the reasons that people build raised beds. Of course this garden is too large for me to use a raised bed situation in. But a raised bed would allow gravity to pull some of this water uh, out of that system and uh, not cause the same problems that I run into here. Here is a raised bed situation recently uh, one that I put in got a few plants in it obviously you can see a few weeds in there as well but when you press down on this the soil is much firmer it's not completely saturated not oozing water out as I make a step so these plants have got some oxygen in their root zone and they're going to be just fine. Knowing that this soil on my property uh, holds a lot of excessive water following periods of heavy rainfall, um, I have to take precautions to make sure that the plants I want to grow here are not uh, going to be standing in saturated soils. One, one method of doing that is to simply build up the soil where you plant them. These are some of my fairly recently planted blueberries and this berm of soil here is about 12 inches tall and my hope is that that will keep their root system, their very fibrous root systems, elevated above any zone of saturation, at least enough to keep the plants alive through those periods of time. This is another example of a recently planted fruit tree. Uh, I've killed a lot of fruit trees by planting them on this property. So my goal here was to simply elevate the ground where the fruit tree was planted and hopefully keep it alive. Of course some plants are more sensitive to being in saturated soils. These are some grapevines that I planted about six or seven years ago on flat ground and this ground is saturated 
uh, but I've never had an issue with the grapevines on uh, this wet natured site or at least wet natured when it gets heavy rain during the summertime of course it gets very dry it's a it's a very fine sand and uh, it drains well in fact it dries out quickly thus I have a drip irrigation system installed on these sites to make sure they get an adequate water during the uh, summer months and since I know this soil is uh, prone to this saturation especially during the winter and spring months um, here's my pasture that is planted to a mixture right now of white clover and ryegrass which tolerate uh, saturation they like lots of water so they're not too badly bothered by uh, saturated soil and uh, there's some common Bermuda grass underneath there that will come up very quickly very soon and uh, take over this paddock when the uh, when the summer temperatures rise and and then I can grow uh, lots of good common Bermuda grass forage for the few grazing animals that I have.